Hi guys, it's me. I'm here with my week 40 post-op lap band update. Um, I'm a little couple days beyond it, but I think I'm going to start doing my updates on Sundays because um, it seems to be a day that will work for me. So I don't know how much I weigh today. That is uh, another story that I will have to tell you during this update. So, um, just to give a recap, let me pull up my thing. Um, I'm going to start with last Friday, and then I will come up till today. I was going to do my update on Thursday, that's why I started with last Friday, but I didn't. So, um, Monday... Okay, just kidding. I'll, I guess I'll start with Monday. Yeah, Monday. Monday, I went to my new doctor here in Washington, D.C. Um, you know, a decent experience, I guess. Um, he was really nice. He asked me a lot of questions about my lap band. He asked me some questions that I didn't know the answer to, um, like if my port was sewn in or if it was put in place with, um, like, the port, like, a gun, basically, like, where they, like, it's a thing where they click, and it, like, puts the port in your abdomen, in your abdominal muscle, I mean, or if it was sewn in. I'm not sure. I hope mine was sewn in. Um, but, yeah, so, um, I weighed at the doctor's office, and I weighed 198 pounds. Um, so that's not good. Um, I was under the impression that I weighed 194 pounds, and that is not the same as 198 pounds. So, um, I was like, okay, well, you know, I need to stop using my scale on the carpet in my bedroom. So I started using the scale on the tile outside of my dorm room. Um, I get up really early so I can go out there, like, half naked. Because I, you know, I will typically like to weigh naked, naked, but here I can't. So I, um, I just have my bra under on, and I go in the hallway really quick, and I weigh myself, and I come back in my room. <coughs> Excuse me. So as of um, Monday, I was 198. I got my fill. Um, I got one cc. I did liquids Monday, mushies Tuesday, solids Wednesday. I weighed myself in the hallway. I want to say on Tuesday, and I was at 195, and then I think it was Wednesday that I weighed myself, Wednesday or Thursday, and my scale said 200 pounds, and I'm like, uh, that is not correct, um, that's not correct, <laughs> so I basically don't use that scale anymore because it's not um, good for me. It was telling me I weighed less than I did when I weighed a lot, and now it's telling me that I weigh more than I do when I don't weigh that much. So I have not had a scale for the past four days. I have um, been eating pretty well. Um, something that's been a little bit different about this fill than last fills is that in the morning I can eat. Um, I'm not super tight in the morning. I'm tighter than, you know, whatever, but not, like, super tight. Like, I know some people can't eat first thing in the morning. They have to, like, drink coffee, and then they can eat. I can eat. Um, except after I eat, my lap band, like, freaking clenches closed. So today, for example, I was done eating at 9.30. And then at about 2.30? I tried to eat some tuna that I made, tuna salad, tuna mayonnaise, relish, and I, I couldn't. I um, got stuck, and um, I couldn't do it. So that was at 2.30. I tried like an hour later. Still wasn't happening. So then I decided to wait till dinner, and so I went to dinner at about 5.30. And I was fine to eat. Once the gates open for dinner time, I can eat. Like, so tonight I ate um, salad, cucumbers, blue cheese, and some bacon. So, like, I basically made, like, a cob salad. And then I ate some watermelon. 
And then I made a mistake of staying in the cafeteria because, like, I don't know, here the cafeteria is really social and I'm only here for a short time and I want to get that socialization in the cafeteria. Like, I need to be signing. I need to be around deaf people. Like, I want to stay in the cafeteria so I can hang out. Except when I hang out, I want to eat more. So, like, I got there at, like, 5.30. I ate. I was probably done eating by 6. And then, also, I don't have a TV in my room, and there's TV in cafeteria, so I'm just, like, watch TV in there. So, I was done eating by, like, 6. Um, I, I was full. You know, I was fine. And I sat in there. And then, like, a half an hour later, I saw somebody had, like, chicken wings. I'm like what? I want some chicken wings. So I got chicken wings and then I sat there and ate that. And then like a half an hour later, like we're still sitting there just like talking and stuff. And I was like, oh, we go get some ice cream. So I had ice cream. So today wasn't really that great. Um, but like yesterday was great. The day before that was pretty good. And, um, overall I feel like pretty good about this week. Um, I started exercising more, I guess. So, like, Tuesday, I went to the gym, and I, like, freaking, I went hard, like, and I was by myself, and so I was really proud of myself. Um, it's the first time that I, like, actually went and did weight training, um, alone. So, um, I went early Saturday morning, so the gym here was, like, dead. Nobody was there to make me feel self-conscious, um, and then I didn't write down <laughs> what I did for the rest of the week. So, yeah, this week was... Um, I guess a learning week of having my new fill and what it's going to feel like. Um, one thing that's not good is I thought that I had like six and a half cc's in my band before my fill. And then when I went to the doctor, he um, completely um, deflated my band. I forget what that's called. There's a, a scientific term for it. But um, he completely deflated my band and he said only five cc's came out. And the level of restriction that I had would make more sense that it was only five cc's, but for some reason I had in my head that I had six and a half cc's in my band. So, um, next time I go to get a fill, he said that he's going to do take it all out again just to make sure that, like, I don't have a leak or anything. It's probably just that I misunderstood how much I had. But I've been trying to call my surgeon's office uh, back home to see, um... But I haven't done that yet. So I hope I don't have a leak. I hope that's just because I remembered it wrong. So um, that's really all that I have to update. I'm going to put my body shot at the end of this. It's just like a quick body shot. It's not like my full 360. Um, and also, um, I don't know. I had to do this assignment for... It's actually like my take-home midterm test for one of the classes I'm taking. Um, it's called Dynamics of Oppression. That's the course title, and um, we had to pick a list of, from a list of articles and compare and contrast these two articles. And two of the articles on the list were about discrimination based on obesity. And the first article was basically just talking about how it happens, where it happens, how it affects people. But the second article that I was reading... Um, talked a lot about how while yes it is unhealthy to be overweight or obese you know because of the physical the physical effects of it the um, physiological effects of being overweight um, but mostly it was about the research behind how the social implications of discrimination and bias and stigma is equally unhealthy um, for people. So the discrimination that like we face as obese people is just as unhealthy as the physical condition of being overweight. Um, things that I, I wasn't really aware of. I mean, obviously I know discrimination is wrong. Um, obviously I know that it leads to low self-esteem, but I guess I never really understood the implications that this low self-esteem, this stress, this anxiety of being discriminated against or anticipating discrimination causes um, serious strain on our bodies and um, I guess it was really eye-opening for me because um, I hadn't thought about that 
I know I've said, like, before, like, being fat, like, fucks with your head. And I guess for a long time I only thought of it as, like, me being inside of my own head and not um, other people getting into my head. I guess I like to think that I'm, like, independent and this, like, impenetrable fortress or whatever, you know, but... um, I don't know, it, it, in a way, like, it feels good to know that, like, this is real, um, it's legitimate, it's backed by research, it's, you know, the same things happen, um, people who are discriminated against based on race, um, things like, like, all sorts of medical conditions, like high blood pressure, um, lots of different things, um, I can't quote it off the top of my head or whatever, but... I guess it's just nice to see um, a legitimacy being given to um, the effects that it has on people who are discriminated against because of their weight. Um, Talked about, like, obesity being, like, the last, um, the last acceptable form of discrimination because people think that fat people are lazy or, um, or basically that and everything else, you know. So it was just a really interesting article, and if you guys have access to it, it's not a light read, it's like an academic writing. Um, but it's worth the read. Um, and I want to make sure I give you the right one. Okay. The one that I really liked the most was called... I could find it. I'm so sorry. Um, what's called The Stigma of Obesity, and it's by Marcus Schaefer and Ken Ferraro. And the other article that I read was called Bias, Discrimination, and Obesity by Rebecca Pohl, P-U-H-L, and Kelly Browner, or Browning, I'm not sure. So, um, I've accessed them through my university, but I'm not sure if you can probably find them online otherwise or um, through some sort of journal database. So, yeah, read about it because it affects you and it's very real and it's not just in your head. It gets in your head, it affects your body, but it's not just in your head. People are putting that shit there. So, um, I don't know, I guess I'm a firm believer in the more you know, the the better you do, or I'm not really sure how that saying goes. When you know better, you do better. How about that? Because I know a lot of it was um, internalized stigma, you know, that I was feeding myself because someone fed it to me, and so I kept that shit going inside my head, and there's no room for it, and it's not, um, it's not healthy for your head, and it's not healthy for your body. So I encourage everyone to stop participating in, I don't know, negative talk, self-doubt, any of that stuff. So I think we have a hard enough time just trying to deal with the physiological impacts of being overweight and we don't need to worry about the psychological ones um, because it's not helpful. So, um, oh, this is going to be really long, but I'm really sorry. The thing that, the, where I was going with this is that I noticed even within the weight loss surgery community that there's this attitude of how bad do you want it? Um, there's this attitude of, well, you know better. Your doctor gave you the rules. Why aren't you following them? Um, and I just want to say, like, that there's, especially from within our community, there's no room for that shit. Like, not at all. Um, you know, people, before you have weight loss surgery, asked you that same stuff. If you wanted it bad enough, you could do it by yourself. You already know what to do. Why aren't you doing it? Um, and you obviously have taken the step forward to have weight loss surgery, and that is a major step. And we don't need anybody telling us after we have weight loss surgery that we don't want it bad enough. Um, Guess what? I want it really fucking bad, and right now I'm having a hard time. 
Um, does that mean that I don't know that it takes hard work? Absolutely. Um, I know that it takes hard work and I want to do the work, but sometimes I struggle. And I struggle because I have a fucking problem. I had weight loss surgery because I have a fucking problem. And I just don't think that there's any room out there in my life. Um, even on the internet, even though it's huge as hell and can fit everything, there's no room for people. to make anyone feel inferior based on their success, the timeline of their progress, or anything like that. And I think that um, that's right there, like, within the community. Like, if you've had weight loss surgery and you're trying to, you're telling someone else they don't want it bad enough and they're not working hard enough, it's, like, horizontal fucking discrimination and you're an asshole if you say that stuff. Um, we all want it and we're all trying to get it and hopefully we all will get it. And... What we need is people to be encouraging and loving. Um, this is not directed at any specific person or event, to be honest. Um, when I was reading today, I just really thought about it. When I was reading, you know, the stereotypes of obese people, that they are weak-willed and they don't work hard and they're lazy and all of these things, I've noticed that, like, I've seen stuff like that, like, from us. I might have even said shit like that, I'm not, I'm not sure, um, it just really made, like, a light went off my head today, and I was just like, you know, I hope that I've never participated in that kind of behavior, and if I have, I'm sorry, and I definitely don't encourage it, so, um, yeah, that's all, I'm gonna go, because this is really long, um, I intend to weigh myself tomorrow morning at this gym's, um, scale, I tried to go sad on Friday, but the weight training room, um, was closed and so I couldn't get on the scale so I'm gonna go tomorrow morning and I'll report my weight for you guys next week um I hope you guys are doing great I love you and I will put my body shot at the end of it have a good week